And now, today's featured speaker is Natalie Schlegel, MBA 08, and the Director in the Cronin Office of International Education. Natalie is passionate about international education exchange, having worked in the field for the past 20 years, advising students at high school, undergraduate, and graduate levels. She has worked at Bentley since 2003 and enjoys the opportunity to be part of a community that is both close-knit and global at once. Natalie holds a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Spanish from Vanderbilt University and an MBA from Bentley University. She is joined by Fabiana Clemente and Valeria Ponte, both from the class of 2021. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Natalie, Fabiana, and Valeria. Thank you so much, Carmen. Can everybody see my slides, Carmen? If they're visible now? Yep, you're good. Great. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you here today. Um, and I'm so pleased to have Fabiana and Valeria with me. Um, they'll be introducing themselves momentarily because I know that they are the, the stars of the show, really. Um, this is one of my favorite annual Bentley events um, and really thrilled to be here to have this opportunity virtually. Um, as um, Carmen indicated, I've been in um, international education for about 20 years. Um, my career started in international ed at EF Education um, in Cambridge, Mass., their U.S. headquarters. I went on to Harvard University from there, then to Bentley. Um, I don't think that I had known I would stay this long, but it has been a true um, exciting ride to watch Bentley grow over this period and to grow international education alongside, to earn my MBA, um, and now I truly do bleed Bentley Blue with a, um, a family that I met my husband at Bentley, my kids are Bentley fans, so um, it's really a great community here. Um, but as truly global as this institution is, and it's one thing that keeps me so excited and energized, um, is that you know you without leaving Waltham's borders, um, we here at Bentley have a global community. We have um, robust um, international students, professors who are from many countries who have taught and lived in many countries. Um, so the perspectives here are broad and deep, and it's a really energizing place to be. But yet, I still believe there's no substitute. Um, for taking the leap to put yourself in a truly um, different cultural context than your own if you are an American student. Um, so um, I think that's really important um, now more than ever why um, connections face to face with people are valuable um, and why this work keeps us energized. Um, so I'm so excited to have um, students like um, Fabiana and Valeria and so many more um, that just show us every day um, how business can be a powerful force for good in the world and connection. Um, and there's so much to learn. So here's our overview on the screen of what we'll cover today. I'll just give a little bit of context, um, how Bentley fits in nationwide, talk about what our options are, um, for students, give Valeria and Fabiana plenty of time to give their perspectives all the way through from there. Costs, financial aid, health safety, these are the questions that are most specific um, or, or most common from families. So I'm gonna hone in there and we'll um, focus mostly on semester length programs. While we're happy to take questions on any others, and I'll give you a quick little snapshot when I talk about programs, because these are the longest programs, they tend to, to raise the most questions. So that's where I'll focus our attention. A little bit on what's, what's to expect if you have a student who's serious about thinking for the future um, and take your questions. So with no further ado, um, here's some context. Um, we are thrilled that for many years running now, um, we have been in the high 40s and in fact, 50% of the undergraduate class of 2020 actually, <clears throat> and for quite a few other years, has participated in at least one study abroad program. Um, and as you can see from the, 
the next graphic, a large majority of those students at Bentley participate in semester long. Um, you'll soon learn that we've got short intensive courses, summer programs, so all different lengths. Um, but we have robust participation in um, semester long, which we're really proud of. Another point of pride is that our study abroad participants at Bentley look and reflect, look like um, the Bentley population. So students of color are absolutely represented um, to the same degree that they are on campus. Um, while we do have nationwide quite a bit of work to do at university campuses, um, where students of color aren't always as well represented. Um, we're proud that there, once Bentley students get here, um, the barriers are um, the barriers are broken down. Um, that students, no matter <clears throat> their financial aid package, no matter um, their background, are studying abroad at Bentley. Um, so you compare these numbers to the nationwide context. Um, where 50% of Bentley students are studying abroad. Nationwide, it's more like 10 to 15% of undergraduate students are studying abroad. Um, and when you look at uh, semester long programs where it's about 42% of Bentley students nationally, um, most 65% of students are doing eight weeks or less. So most of your students um, nationwide, if they're studying abroad at all, are studying abroad for very short periods, usually a week or two. Um, and while those programs are absolutely great, we have a lot of those at Bentley, we're proud that um, we have students who are willing to really invest in some true immersion experience as part of their Bentley career. And so where does that lead us? That has, that, um, recognition at Bentley that study abroad is such a high impact practice, that it is um, a true valuable form of experiential learning that is so critical to our DNA here. This has led us to be consistently recognized year in, year out um, by the Institute of International Education, um, specifically their Open Doors report. Um, year in year out we're recognized as a leading institution for participation in study abroad and participation in semester long study abroad so we've got the quantity and the quality and the access to our programs so we're so happy about that at Bentley so let's get into what our programs actually look like so 500 undergraduates per year are, are divvying their time into programs like these anywhere let's start from the bottom up anywhere from short intensive programs led by our own faculty of one or two weeks in semester breaks that are tied to bentley courses or they are intensive courses on their own um, students are doing those type programs, maybe on to a summer program, which are possible even as early as the first, after the first year, um, to do either a traditional study program or internships are extremely popular in the summer internationally. Um, and then semester and academic year programs, so for a full course load. Um, and study, internship, and service are all part of that as well. It's not all just classroom, um, as you'll hear from our students. Um, and while our students are going to tell you about their semester experience, I just want to make a little bit um, of a plug, or at least just to give you a little bit of context about our own faculty's um, intensive courses, just so you can see on the screen the many examples, this was just in one year, um, what was offered. Um, while we don't have these on offer this year, our faculty are hard at work right now, um, reimagining what some virtual programs could look like in spring and summer this year. And we intend to have these back um, starting next year. Um, so these rotate quite a bit, and I know many Bentley students who have participated in courses like these um, as early as their first year, um, maybe have participated in more than one. Sometimes it's, it's the spark that gets students comfortable with going out on their own for a whole semester. Other times it's students returning from a semester abroad who just um, can't wait to explore a new region of the world. Um, here's just a few um, testimonials from our faculty who can attest that 
it's not just our students that are gaining tremendously from these experiences. They often find that it is one of the most rewarding teaching experiences of their lives as well. Um, Professor Kaczewski from Natural Sciences at the bottom says, um, he still loves helping students understand that Africa is not a place to fear and it's a privilege to get to introduce students to Ghana and it's a highlight of his experience as a Bentley faculty member. So that is truly humbling um, to hear what our, our fantastic faculty have to say about working with us in the international office. So a little bit more now into semester programs. And it's really hard to give you um, a one size fits all explanation of what they are um, because our partner universities and our affiliate um, study abroad programs all have a lot of differences and it's worth exploring um, what those are. And then we have two students here today who will give you a snapshot of their own. Um, and, and the funny the funny thing is, a lot of people, the first question is, how many programs do you have? And I, and I honestly shy away from answering that number sometimes because with the, with the intensives that change every year and we're constantly adding new partners, it really does change a lot. But suffice it to say, in the ballpark of um, at least 50 programs in more than 30 countries are available to your students. And the, the logos here are just a sample of some of our partners and affiliates um, that are commonly sought out by our students. But what I can say what they all share in common is these bullets on the screen is that no matter where your students would go for a semester, they can all count on a, a course offerings in English if, if uh, their language ability is, is um, if they're studying in a country where English is not the first language and, and their language ability is not sufficient to enroll in courses in the local language. However, many students do um, engage in courses in the local language if they have studied it prior at Bentley and we very much encourage that. All programs will have um, Bentley credit and grades. Um, Although the grades are excluded from the GPA, we call it GPA neutral. It's not exactly the same as pass fail because it is the grades are reported on the transcript, but it frees students up from being beholden to the GPA and for fear of enrolling in courses that might be a great challenge because study abroad is all about academic exploration um, and taking course, fantastic elective courses that our faculty don't teach here. Um, that's what gets our faculty so excited is when they look at our partners course offerings and say, wow, we don't teach this. This is something that would really round out your um, finance elective or um, for example. Um, and students can be guaranteed Bentley credit ahead of time. They know what, student, uh, what students have taken before, what's pre-approved, what courses that they will fulfill in their Bentley degree plan um, so that they can plan with confidence and graduate on time. All of these partners and affiliates offer staff support on the other side. So we work in really close partnership with them. While Bentley's doing a lot of pre-departure orientation for students before they study abroad, um, we're coordinating with our partners on the other side and they're welcoming and receiving them with their own on-site orientation. Now, every university is different. Some orientation will last a week, some will last a few hours. Um, so it really is worth exploring, students exploring to learn um, what to expect at each school and, and um, how they, their needs will be met. Um, but all offer opportunities for integration with right alongside local students, um, different housing options, um, opportunity, opportunities to possibly engage in internships or volunteering um, as a way to really maximize the time to make local connections. So next up, I'm going to um, ask Fabiana and um, Valeria to give a little bit of a snapshot of the day in the life. Like just starting off, here's two examples of semester study abroad students. Um, Fabiana, can you start us off by kind of talking about where did you study? What kind of classes were you taking? Um, 
and a little bit about your housing situation and your your extracurriculars. Sure. Um, hi guys, I'm super excited to be here sharing my Saturday with you. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Fabiana Clemente, um, Fabi for short. I'm an international student from Venezuela, so Latin America. I studied abroad in fall 2019. Um, I studied through the CIEE Open Campus Program, which allows you to change cities every six weeks. So every six weeks would be called what is a block. So we have three blocks. Um, I chose to study in Cape Town, South Africa for the first block, and then Rome, Italy for the following um, second and third block. Um, I am double majoring in creative industries and in global perspectives. Um, and I'm also the, the peer advisor intern coordinator. So um, my classes were a mix of art or elective classes and business classes. So I had the opportunity to take, for example, marketing classes while also taking very local based um, um, curriculum. So for example, in, in South Africa, I took one class that was called Atlantic Crossing. So it, it really um, exposed me to the South African culture. Um, in Italy, I took a class on Renaissance art. And what I really liked about my program was that in your classes, there were excursions, basically. So um, in South Africa, for example, as a class with a professor, we got to go and experience a class of African drums. So we, had, we got to learn that. While in Italy, we got to go to museums. Um, I actually got to go to the St. Peter's Cathedral. I had to climb like a thousand stairs to get to the top, but it, it was amazing. In terms of my housing, I, I lived in apartments that were provided by the um, program. Um, so yeah, um, what else, Natalie? Um, could you highlight something maybe outside of your class time that was really rewarding for you? Sure. Well, um, it's not exactly outside, but during Rome, I got to do an internship with, through my program. They helped me um, gain a partnership with this very um, amazing, it was a consulting firm startup in Italy that sold trees and plant them in the Italian um, landscape. That really helped help my, uh, my study abroad experience because it was an exposure um, I'd never encountered before. I got to develop my professional skills, my Italian skills, all while um, engaging with these amazing people and they would introduce me to culture, the professional culture, for example, we had coffee breaks every three minutes, for example, something I've never experienced before. Um, so that was an amazing experience, I think, that would I, I encourage anyone who goes abroad to do. Thank you, Fabiana. What about you, Valeria? Can you give a, a day in the life snapshot of what your program was like, what you studied, your housing? Of course. Hi, so I'm Valeria Ponte. I'm from Puerto Rico. I'm a senior. And I studied abroad last spring during the entire COVID. Um, I went to Madrid. I studied at ICADE Business School in Universidad Pontificia Comillas. Um, I'm a major in Bentley. I studied corporate finance and accounting with a minor in computer information systems. So it's super possible to go abroad if you're double majoring or major or in a minor. Like, it's totally doable. Um, so I would say for my classes, I only took like, I took four classes because I wanted to take like a light semester, not too much on my plate. So I had one finance class, international finance, which was really cool because I was able to like learn about more about the like foreign economies and like Europe and all that rather than like having like Bentley concentration on the United States. So that was a really nice perspective on the finance side. And then my three other classes were mostly on like Spanish history and Spanish like art and culture, which I actually loved. And I, when I like first chose them, I was like, okay, sure. Like it's Spanish, like it's a history class in Spanish, so it's fine. But I'm so grateful I took those because I had 
I did not know a lot about Spanish history. I did not know much about Franco and like his 36 years in dictatorship and all about like the art in Spain. Like they have one of the most famous museums in the world, like El Prado. They have like famous paintings and everything. So it was just like amazing to like learn and have like profess like Spanish professors tell me about how they're passionate about all these paintings, all this history. And it was an amazing experience. And I know it's like, I still remember everything because I was so like interested. I was like, wow, like I still, I can fully give a lecture on Franco if I wanted to. <laughs> um, and so for housing, I decided I wanted to like choose my own housing on my own. I, there was the option of like finding like a residence institute, like a residence type of um, program for because that's really common abroad. Like there's a lot of um, it's like companies and programs that basically they hold like they have like this um, building for like international students and basically people from like all over the world, all like different universities, they can enroll in that program for like international residences. But I decided to just like find my own apartment with my roommate who was not even like in the same program as I. We were able to like figure it out um, through like websites across like we just Google, started Googling, um, trying to see like finding reliable websites. I talked to actually some friends, some exchange students who were from Madrid and they were studying at Bentley. I asked them like, hey, like what areas do you recommend? What like areas are you going to Madrid to live in? Um, which ones are less expensive, what sites you recommend, like how can I find housing. So I feel like it's really helpful to try, like even with social media, it's so easy to like connect with people so that you can easily find someone that like goes actually to the country you live in or like know someone that lives there or just like, any type of connection that can help you find a good place to live in and a reliable like website. I used, um, personally, I used spotahome.com. <laughs> And it was amazing. It was super easy process. It wasn't super trustworthy. I did not feel like I was getting scammed at all. Like it was a lot of communication between me and the landlord. So I really recommend that. Um, obviously Airbnb is also really reliable, but I found that one was more expensive. So I definitely would like go to other resources before going to Airbnb. Um, that's great. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to have that perspective from the two of you because um, Fabiana has done a program through an affiliate CIEE where housing was fully arranged, where Valeria did a program with our one of our exchange partners in Madrid. So um, housing is not provided by the university, which tends to be common, but so many Bentley students um, have done what Valeria does and, and, and found their own housing with a lot of support um, through networks, exchange students at Bentley who are from that university and many others. So both are very, very viable options and give um, a lot of different um, ways to approach it. And, and some students live with host families as well. Um, so thank you for those kind of snapshots. Can you each say a little bit about um, kind of looking back, how did study abroad fit in with your Bentley, um, your Bentley education? Why was it a valuable part of your education? Fabiana, do you want to start? Sure. Um, well, studying abroad made me realize that I really enjoy being um, exposed to other cultures, other perspectives, other points of view. So in that way, it made me feel more, well, it made me gain more cultural sensitivity, which I feel that enhanced my, my the way I network, the way I approach people, and it made me reshape my career goals. For example, um, I definitely want to make that part of my professional life. Apart from that, it also, I gain skills like um, like I, I, I develop more my Italian skills that was very, um, I think, unique in, in, a, in a sense. It made me also um, open my eyes that I really like marketing as a, as a career in the future. Also, maybe living in Italy, I don't know. Um, it was a great experience because it, 
it opened my eyes to so many things about the person I want to become in the future. Wonderful. What about you, Valeria? Yeah, so um, my major is obviously like a little bit more boring <laughs> than Fabiana's. I'm studying accounting, which is still cool. Like, you can whatever, make it cool. But I feel like personally, what I really got out most academically and career wise from like studying abroad was like, I honestly am not a big fan of the United States work culture. Like, I feel like they're so, it's like they, ha they have the work and then they have their life. And I'm like, I really don't like that. Like in business, like I've worked in, I, I had to like, I've worked in an accounting firm for the past two summers and like seeing how hard everybody works, how many hours they put into that was just like, wow, like, why is this like this? Like, why is, is this the norm? And just like going to Spain and seeing a completely different work culture, it's like legit, the, extremely the opposite. Like, People, if you have a lunch break in Spain, you will leave two hours. And <laughs> like in the United States, people eat lunch in their desk. They don't even have a lunch break. So like, I really, I was really interested in seeing just like a different work, work culture. It's potentially, I would love to work in the United States. And I honestly, there's so many global companies right now. Like, um, like obviously my big main focus are the big fours, like the big accounting firms and they all have like international programs where like you can like transfer to an office um where globally where you can go to spain you can go to italy you, there's so many offices worldwide that if you feel like you have you need that, like that change and like your work style your work culture and work life you can have that and it was amazing to be able to see that before i immersed myself into like that opportunity in the future so i feel like that was a really valuable experience to just see that different perspective. Excellent. You'll definitely be hearing some more um, from Fabiana and Valeria, um, but already I'm inspired because it's making me think 17 years at Bentley, I know a lot of alums, and I can tell you that um, even um, alums that I know that had maybe never even left Massachusetts um, before they studied abroad at Bentley, to see the global careers that um, so many Bentley Study Abroad alums have built um, has been just a true um, pleasure to watch and see them grow. Um, and it's, it's common, it's not rare. Um, so it truly is, I think, a, a stepping stone to a lifelong um, learning um, approach to that that's global, not just local. So um, kudos to you all. Um, I'll, I've got more questions for you coming up for sure. Um, but let me um, move on to some of the most common questions that families have, um, cost and financial aid. Um, so how semester abroad is so possible for so many Bentley students is that we truly believe that if you can afford to be at Bentley, you can afford a study abroad semester. And how we do that is a very common way for private universities is that um, Bentley students pay homeschool tuition like normal. Um, and with that comes with their full aid package. Um, the only exception from, for, to that is athletic scholarships. Um, However, um, any federal and state aid that you typically receive continues, but even also your Bentley merit or your need-based aid um, for a semester abroad. And that's very valuable to go in knowing with the confidence that that aid continues and you don't have to um, be too price conscious in looking for study abroad programs. Um, that also brings with it even if you aren't an aid recipient, a real value as well, because um, it means that there's no transfer credit. This is Bentley direct credit that we have said that taking these courses at our partners or affiliates are as valuable, as good as our own credit. We know the partners, we've vetted the courses. Um, that means there's no restrictions on what you can count towards your major or your minor, making it the most flexible possible for you to plan your degree and graduate on time and not be set back. Um, so that's valuable even without an, an aid package. Um, so what you see on your tuition bill in a semester abroad is very similar to normal. You see your tuition charge, you see your technology charge. Students are still using their laptops and all the resources while they're abroad. 
The one difference is um, we charge an international administrative fee of $500 and housing is, is not charged by Bentley at all. Um, so if you're used to paying for on-campus housing, you will not see that charge on your um, Bentley bill and you'll be either working with your study abroad program to pay them directly or you'll be looking for your own housing and paying a landlord as Valeria did. Um, and some students have enough financial aid that normally covers um, housing at Bentley as well, or even meals, and that is still accessible to you um, when there's a, essentially you'll have a credit balance on your account. Um, you can request that to be paid out and you can use that to help pay for your expenses abroad. Um, the major expenses that aren't included are airfare and transportation, um, and the types of personal expenses. This is a very personal category, um, but I am firmly of the belief, um, because I have seen study abroad budgets that run the gamut, um, but I am firmly of the belief that um, the best study abroad experiences don't cost much at all, um, that some of the most rewarding um, activities that students do um, are very are about relationship building, about um, making local friends, connecting with professors, um, you know, going visiting with them um, and doing what they do on a normal basis and not necessarily the tourist things that might cost a lot of money. Um, so it is very possible to have an affordable study abroad experience. Um, so ladies, do you want to say a little bit, I'd start with you Valeria because um, you are a student athlete and maybe you want to say a little bit about how financial aid worked for you. Um, so for, first of all, for athletes, I, like, I feel like a lot of people think you can't go abroad if you're an athlete and that, that is wrong, you completely possible, you just have to speak to your coach and like obviously go in the off season semester. Um, but so financially, I basically had my exact same financial aid, my, all my grants, my loan, I had a combination of like grants, loans, and scholarships, and they were all transferred, like I didn't have to do anything, I, they just all got immediately transferred, and if you feel like you need more, there's a lot of programs also that you can apply to for like extra funding. Um, and for volleyball, that obviously the scholar, like if you have an athletic scholarship, then that will get adjusted because you will not be, obviously you will not be playing that semester. So that will be cut. And I feel like that varies between like, with, depending on like your financial package or like your coach or like depends, but it will definitely be affected. Like mine, mine just got cut by half, pretty standard. <laughs> and I think my teammates were like the ones that went abroad, it's pretty much the same. But that completely varies between like your situation with your sport. Um, and yeah, also like Natalie said, it's very possible to like also get a credit, which is really, I, I had one. So it was, I helped me a lot with like housing and like other expenses I had. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Valeria. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about scholarships and maybe that, that would be a good place for Fabiana to chime in as well. Um, as an international student. Um, so one thing I want to stress to parents is that even if um, you are very supportive of international education and feel like it's something you want to make um, room for financially for your student, um, my biggest regret is that not enough qualified Bentley students are applying for scholarships um, because it's not just the financial benefit, which is significant, anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 for a semester abroad. Um, it's that they're very prestigious um, and they're um, excellent um, development opportunities too, because some scholarships tie to them, you know, some activities, you know, visit um, a local high school in your um, um, in the community where you're studying and talk about um, the importance of, of um, international relations and studying abroad. So these, sometimes these activities and that, that for instance, that's of the Gilman scholarship here, that is one of the, the strings attached is that students need to propose um, an activity that they'll do to promote international education, either abroad or at 
home. And those activities are sometimes part of the most rewarding things that they do, they've done is to connect with, with others. So um, please, please, even if, if finances aren't your biggest worry, consider and urge your students to look into scholarships um, now because there are so many options out there. So these are just a couple that I wanna highlight. And then um, Fabiana can just say a bit about um, hers as well. So the, the Gilman Scholarship, these are all these three are national competitive awards, but yet Bentley students do receive these almost every year. And I'm convinced that with even more students in the pipeline, it would be um, even more regular. So this is a prestigious thing, um, as well as a great financial benefit. The Gilman Scholarship is for Pell eligible students. Um, and we even had um, two students on this award this year in 2020. Um, so it remains to be seen if they will defer or they will do a virtual experience this year. Um, but that's proof that Bentley students are earning this. Um, Fund for Education Abroad is has many, many scholarships within its portfolio. Um, there are some that are very specific. Um, to student uh, student affinity groups, but there are some that are much more broad. Um, so we have um, lots of staff knowledge on my team. I have um, staff who have contributed to reviewing, um, being scholarship reviewers nationwide for these um, scholarships. So they, our staff has good tips on what makes a competitive application. So I encourage students to check these deadlines because as you see, even for study abroad next year, their application cycles will actually start quite soon. Um, so some early um, investigation is definitely worth it. Um, Fabiana, can you just talk about what kind of scholarship that you earned? Yes. So. Um... Me being an international student, I'm not eligible to um, have financial aid from Bentley. Um, with that said, my biggest benefactor for starting a bar were my parents. One of them is present, so gracias papi. Um, but I did receive a, a merit-based scholarship through my program. So what I had to do was just send in my, my grades. Do, um, I had to be recommended by my study bar advisor and do a little essay. And I actually got my housing for free while abroad and also they will credit, that always helps. Amazing, amazing. So that is a fantastic opportunity. Um, our affiliate organizations like CIE is one of them that Fabiana studied with. Um, they have a lot of funding opportunities for students. So, so much here, that's one major takeaway is please look into funding. Um, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions, but um, so I know Carmen will jump in in a few minutes when um, I'll be wrapping up the main presentation, but just wanted to give you a quick overview of, um, this is a slide that we show in pre-departure orientation about health and safety. The semester prior to study abroad is much preparation with students. Um, and a major, one of the major topics is health and safety because no university, um, or program can eliminate all risk or guarantee your safety, even right here on our own campus. Um, and so what we try to show is how um, each, each party has a role um, in doing, in mitigating risks, but you, the student, are the critical piece of the puzzle. Um, so what we do is we talk a lot about what each party does in preparation um, and, and mostly how students can prepare. Um, so Bentley provides things like multiple pre-departure orientations prior to departure, um, international insurance with 24-7 emergency assistance services, um, ensuring that you have medical evacuation, security evacuation, um, tools like Alert Traveler, which is our um, really cool app which students can use to get real-time um, safety data wherever they are in the world and they can get messages from us um, and check-ins which has been really valuable. 24-7 um, access to our university police and to our staff um, and really just advising and coaching all the way through to make sure that students are planning 
safely and responsibly. And, our, and we work in close partnership with our host universities and partners to do that. Um, I'm proud to say that those universities are people that we know personally and well. We have been there, they have been to Bentley, we know the people on the other end. Um, and that makes really strong partnerships for caring for the, the well being of our, our students. Um, and they are the best at providing the most local specific expertise when students arrive to prepare them for truly what are the most common risks um, that students should be aware of. Um, you know, what, what taxi companies to avoid or what transportation is um, better than others, um, what to be on the lookout for. Those are the local experts. Um, but mostly um, the students themselves. Um, they are largely responsible for their own health and safety and we try to make sure that that doesn't sound scary because I'll tell you I've been in this field for 20 years. 9-11 uh, was a turning point early in my career um, that really focused um, heavily health and safety talk about terrorism and it still is a, a place and a concern in our minds for sure. Um, but I can tell you that every single year I've done this presentation, um, I can tell you that my, while the news has changed, while the concerns that are top of mind um, and the fears that are top of mind have changed over the years, my biggest safety concerns have never changed. And believe it or not, they're quite simple. Um, the biggest risk to student safety abroad is alcohol and automobiles. These are statistically by far um, the largest risks to students um, for accidents abroad. Um, now that's scary too, but the upside of that is that those are very, very much things that are in student control and that students have a lot of authority to exercise maturity and responsibility to make good decisions that can keep them safe. And I think that's going to be a lot of what we're going to see with COVID too, um, is that um, it's going to take a lot of personal responsibility and some change. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the Q&A. Um, Larry, do you want to make a quick um, comment about insurance? Because I know you actually did make use of insurance while you were at Bentley. Yeah, I had kind of like a crazy experience because like, um, so I was in Bar I, I studied in Madrid, right? That was like my whole city. Um, but I was in Barcelona and I needed to go to the hospital. And I, I honestly, I had no idea how the Bentley insurance worked. I didn't know, like, I didn't even know like what insurance they gave us. Cause like they made Bentley just took care of everything for us. And we didn't really have to make any type of, um, any, we didn't have to do anything to get the insurance. It was just done for us. So I was in Barcelona and I needed my insurance and I was just like, wait, what do I do? How do I access this? But I just, it literally took minutes. I had to download an app, get my documents. I had my policy number. I had my, I had all of my insurance information. I just had to provide that to the hospital in Barcelona and it was perfectly fine. No cost, nothing. And nobody asked if like, it was super straightforward and I did not have to have any problems or like be afraid of, oh my God, I'm not going to get attended because I don't have insurance. Family did everything for me and it was really smooth. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Valeria. And as you can see, I'm no, no censorship here, all right? I'm not going to um, make Valeria say that she, she knew exactly what to do beforehand, e even though we do drill these things in orientation a little bit, right? But the, the point is that getting the resources. That's what we're trying to prepare students for is being resourceful. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that study abroad teaches, right, is you're not always going to have the answers, um, but you have to learn um, to get resourceful when you can't just pick up the phone and call your parents sometimes. Um, I want to, I definitely want to talk about the application process and um, things like that, but I think it would probably be best to move to questions now because maybe some of your questions will um, will touch on those subjects. Well, thank um, you very much for that very informative presentation. Um, we do have a few questions, so certainly I'd like to get to those um, and I'll dive right in here. 
Um, our first question is regarding credits. Um, do all credits and internships abroad apply to the Bentley transcript that will then be used towards graduation? If the internship is pre-approved um, in a study abroad program, um, then it will count for Bentley credit, absolutely. Um, it's up to the student, and this goes for any type course in study abroad, not just an internship. It's up to the student to ensure, and advisors help with this, to make sure that that specific course actually fits the, the student's specific degree requirements. Um, so for instance, maybe it could be um, a finance course that you're taking, but you're a marketing major and you only have two other business electives and maybe you don't have room for another finance elective. But in the case of internships though, um, they generally carry a code of a, a business elective code that's very broad, um, which means most students um, won't have any trouble. Um, Fabian, do you wanna say what your internship counted for? Yep, credit. It, was it in your major? Was it an elective? It was a business elective. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers that. Yeah. Um, all right, next question. Uh, since Bentley is moving to a trimester model where um, they will have to complete one of the trimesters over the summer, how does that affect study abroad opportunities for our first year students? If anything, I'd say study abroad uh, opportunities will only expand. Um, we're most heavily looking into right now what more exciting things our faculty will do on their own. Um, for instance, the intensive courses that I talked about that our faculty lead are now done only in semester break times as intensives. But we're talking at Bentley now about what the trimester in the summer will look like for the long haul. And will it be a 14 week semester only? Will there be a seven week um, shorter period? And these could be really great opportunities for some medium range study abroad led by our own faculty. Um, so those opportunities exist. Um, we'll see how much, whether the, um, the world and uh, the United States um, handle on our pandemic and all these factors, how, how it will fare for this summer coming ahead. Um, but we will have some virtual experiences this summer, if not, if in-person isn't possible. So for first year students, I would say, there's only going to be more opportunities. We're also talking about having exchange students because, you know, uh, for instance, Valeria, she studied at one of our exchange partners in Madrid. Um, so those students come to our campus every fall and spring. We're, we're talking to our partners about having exchange partner, exchange students on our campus, even in the, in the summer trimester as well. Um, and whether that would be an option to go to exchange partners for the summer trimester. Awesome, thank you. So our next question, um, you kind of alluded to, a lot of our guests are wondering how um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, how the programs will be coping with this, uh, restrictions on traveling, housing, social distancing, all that kind of stuff. And I don't know that you have a specific answer, but anything I think would be helpful. Yeah, it's so important to address. Study abroad, um, in endorsed by the university is on pause this academic year. Um, and many of my colleagues at other universities still haven't made the call yet for their next semester, their spring 21. Um, but we at Bentley have, and we think that was the right move um, to say, you know, even if international travel is possible as early as January, um, we have a responsibility to think about just because we can doesn't mean we should. And we're taking a, a step back to be methodical. And it's really, I think, put us in a good place to be forward thinking so that we can work with our faculty to develop things for the summer and the, and the year ahead, rather than my colleagues who I feel like are still so spinning their wheels thinking about just the few weeks ahead. As you can, I'm sure all of you know, had a similar experience that in the early days, we were all just looking one week ahead, two weeks ahead, and it was really hard to see past that. And I think it's a really healthy place to be looking farther ahead. Um, but yes, the, the whatever is going to be our new reality, um, um, as far as mitigating risks as people going about our, our business will be the same kinds of things we deal with in study abroad. 
Um, and I think it's very possible, you know, the, the um, social distancing, um, how, how housing is done, all those kinds of things have to be factored. But I'll tell you what, as scary as that might sound, there's, there's a silver lining to this because I believe that um, it will force students to think about first the why and the how of study abroad before thinking about the where and the when. Because the where can I study and when can I go are commonly the first questions we get from students and it's understandable. Um, but we really have to sometimes push and prod to get students to pause and think about why am I doing this? What, how does it tie into my Bentley objectives? Um, and how do I align the kinds of things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis in my study abroad um, program with my goals? So for instance, if I'm a um, foreign language student um, and I really want to improve my language skills, does it make sense to live with other Bentley students? Or would it make sense to live in a more international um, residence? Um, so I think that we are naturally getting to the place where we can have more intentional conversations with students um, who know that study abroad is not going to be just like the, the Instagram feed shows. Um, and that's a good thing because I think that as Valeria and Fabiana probably can attest that um, study abroad is great partly and because it's not so easy. It's a challenge. And when you look at social media, um, when, when young students look at social media and see glamour and fun and travel and stamping passports and selfies, it can create a false um, narrative about truly what the experience is. Um, so I'm, I think um, we're ready to build a new normal and study abroad um, that will be all the better. Awesome, thank you. And for our last question, um, very quickly, could you just touch upon how far in advance students should be applying to study abroad? Yes, students, if you, if students are serious about next year, and especially if you're a sophomore who's thinking about studying abroad in the junior year, um, we will be putting out a lot of information in the next few weeks. We'll be opening our, our application. We'll be doing a lot more peer advisor um, Q&A sessions because the application will open in, um, in a few weeks and around um, Thanksgiving, I believe early December is going to be our first priority deadline with a final deadline um, for February for all of next year. Now that doesn't mean there won't be other opportunities for select programs that come up, but for a semester program next year, it's important to be thinking about it um, pretty soon. Um, first year students, this is a time to explore um, or maybe um, you know, think about shorter programs or longer programs, um, but it's also exciting that you know, we always have students studying abroad in their senior year. Um, oftentimes, maybe they didn't think about it earlier. And once they had peers that were really impacted positively, then they got serious about exploring it. But I'm already hearing from students that we may have more of that as, as you know, the trimester system kicks in. They're maybe graduating at different points in the year um, or with, with more virtual activities, maybe not as tied to being on campus in any particular semester. So. It, sophomores are usually in the fall semester starting to ramp up and really learn. You guys want to add anything to that, Valeria or Fabiana? Um, yeah, I mean, for, I applied in January of my sophomore year, and I went spring semester of my junior year. So this is basically a year in advance, so I would recommend for anyone like considering it, just like start planning a year and a half before your departure like goal semester and basically it's like a year before things are applying if you're kind of spring semester. Well thank you all very very much for this wonderful presentation. Um, if anyone needs Natalie's assistance or has more questions you can feel free to email um, the address is here on the screen and we hope that you will join us next for our cooking demonstration um, from Bologna, Italy. Thanks everyone.